All right. Um, Swinner has been going over some some nice points from this morning um, with with casting out. One of the things that's really heavy on me is I don't want us to see that this is I don't want us to just understand that this is a prophecy that God is showing us. You know what the Lord has been showing us? Prophecy is a lifestyle. It's 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 not just things He's given us. Prophecy leads people to repentance. It leads us to change our life, and and. Where we are right now in history is probably the most important time in all of creation, pretty much, because this is where Christ is wrapping up. This is where he's closing up the work he's been doing for 6,000 years for mankind. Amen? Amen. And we're, we're living in that time where he's about to really close things out. And he's given us an experience in that work prior to getting to the Sunday law. That's what he's doing, because at the Sunday law, this is going to be the most fearful time in all of Earth's history, this time. And, and Christ is preparing us for it. Because during this time, Satan is going to be unleashed in a way that he hasn't been unleashed for 6,000 years, except in the time of Christ. Amen? It's going to be really bad. And God is trying to, God is trying to develop a people to, to contend in that fight because it's going to be a really serious fight. And, but in order to do that, we must have Satan cast out of us. Um, because if he's not cast out of us, then he's going to have control of us in that fight. And the Lord don't want us to come to the, the Lord don't even want Adventists to come to the Sunday law with Satan in them. He doesn't want that. He wants Satan out of our hearts before the Sunday law. Amen? We can't come there with him in the heart or we're going to fall. Ellen White says in the vision, we came there prepared, right? So a group comes to the Sunday law prepared. So if you're coming to the Sunday law prepared, then a work of preparation needs to take place prior to that point. So that means Satan needs to be cast out prior to that point. Amen. It's not that he's completely gone, but all that God wants, him, all that all that God needs of him gone has to be gone by that time. And this is very important. I, I just want us to see how very serious and important this is. Now, we understand this. I'm going I'm to bring in a lot of things that we've taught. And those of us, if this is the first time you're hearing this, even though that has been taught, I know we're using the lines. Some of us may be seeing these things for the first time. And if we're seeing these things for the first time, it's okay. We have so many videos already up on our YouTube channel that goes over these things again over and over and over and over again. And I'm just encouraging those of us watching or listening, if you've seen it for the first time, please I'm not make time to go and watch those videos, you know, and, and, and try to get up to speed on some of these things. Yes, you may watch them and everything may not be clear in them, but nonetheless, as you progress, um, the understanding will come. And I'm speaking from experience because when I came into this message, I came in at a time when it was way over my head, but I saw the importance of it. And once I saw that importance, I made time. I went to work and school and I, and I did not go to my bed until I studied something. I had to get up at three or four in the morning, but I made time because I saw how important it was. I saw how it changed my life, how it transformed me, and I dedicated my time to understanding it. That's what I did. Swindon just went over, beginning and end, right? Judas ended the way he began. Peter ended the way he began. Peter saw how important Christ was to him from the beginning. And he, amen, and he clung to his feet. Judas did not see that. And therefore, he rejected him in the end. So if we see how important this is, if you're hearing God's voice and what was taught by Swinon and what you're hearing now, make the effort, watch those things, catch up to speed, so that, and as you do this, I, I, I know but from experience, you will begin to understand and things will begin to make sense to you, and it will no longer go over your head. So I'm only saying that to say some things may be said today, it may go over the head, that's okay. That you can catch up with other things, but by the grace of God, I hope that some things that are said is not over the head and we can cling to it. So let's go into this. So right here, we know at the beginning, right, is that Jesus cleansed the temple, right? Jesus began his ministry by cleansing the temple. What was he doing? Casting out Satan, right? And Ellen White says Christ was announcing his mission to cleanse the heart from sin. So from beginning to end, at the, at the end, what did Jesus do? Cleanse the temple again. So what is Christ teaching us? He's going to cleanse the temple at the beginning, and he's going to cleanse the temple at the end. But, from, but Ellen White says Christ was announcing his mission to cleanse the heart from sin. It's a period of time. So he's cleansing the heart from sin from here 
to here. He's casting out Satan. That's what he's doing. And he did it for how many years? No, nah, how many years? Three years, right? One, two, and three, right? So these three years, Christ is doing it. But we understand that the Lord has shown us that we get to 2016, which is a fractal of this, of the beginning of 2014, right? We may not understand fractal. We have videos that go into that. Amen? We have plenty of videos. Fractals is a is repeating pattern. Um, we're just taking the principle of what fractals teach. It's a repeating pattern. And what Christ is showing us is that he's repeating the, the pattern over and over again. Why? Until he gets a clean people. He's going to bring us over the same ground until we're clean. And once we're clean, we can now begin the journey. Amen? Oh, yeah, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's what's taught in the washing, me, washing machine cycle, right? Yeah. So right here, Christ is cleansing the temple for three years. But the Lord has shown us that we come to this third, one, two, and we come down to the third, right? And we, we come down to the end, which was right here. And we saw that when we got to the end, the Lord says the end has this beginning and end, right? So the Lord, he connected these two points, right? So this is what I'm going to do. The Lord connected these two points. What do you have? It's a tent, right? So in this wilderness experience, where are we going to be? In the tent with God. And, and as long as we remain in the tent, Satan is cast out. As long as we stay under, the, under God's covering, Satan is out. And this tent is the third angel's message. The third angel's message is this tent. As long as we abide in this tent, this message, Satan is out. As long as the disciples remain with who? Christ. Christ was the cloud. He was the tent. He was the habitation. He was the angel. He was the pillar of fire. As long as they stayed with him, Satan stays out. But when Judas left the tent, he left the presence of Christ. Who came in? Satan came in. So the Lord is teaching us, if we leave this message, who's coming in? Let me say it again. If we leave this message, Satan is coming in. And you can still be here and leave this message. Amen? I'm not talking to people without anymore. I'm talking right here in this movement, in this ministry, in this. If we go out from this message, Satan is coming in. And if we leave this message while sitting here, Satan sees it and he's coming in. And, and that's why I say this is important. Because once we get to this point, Christ is shaking people out. He's shaking out. Amen? That's what he's going to do. You raise up. Amen. So let's look at ten. Everyone follow? The, all I did was connect these two points, right? Because this is the third. The Sunday law crisis is the third. Is the test of the third. Is the Sabbath test. Right? And the Lord is showing here, this we got to endure from the beginning all the way to the second coming. And all we're doing is illustrating this crisis from beginning all the way to the second coming, right? In this whole thing, it's, it's under this third, it's under this test. And this test is this tent. It's, it's, the, it's the 40 years in the wilderness, right? And in the wilderness, we have to be under the cloud. And we have to have this pillar of fire by night. All I'm doing is using these things to illustrate, right? All I'm doing is, is taking these stories to illustrate this experience that we got to have. And, and by the grace of God, these are leaving an impression of the truth upon our minds. It's the truth that God wants us to get. So let's look at 10. Go ahead. An altar. Amen. And this is our experience. This is our experience right right now. Right now we're in the tent. This tent is the message. That's the message. I, I, I want us to see this. Amen. We got to take the message with us everywhere we go. Amen. And build an altar. Wherever we go, we build an altar. Amen. And as long as we abide in that tent, Christ will abide with us. So I want us to see now that when they were in the wilderness for 40 years, Israel, the whole camp, they were in the tent because the tent was the cloud. As long as they were under the cloud, they were in the tent, and they couldn't go out. But the wilderness shows us that some of them went out while they were in the wilderness. And what happened to them? They perished. They got bitten by the serpent. Plagues came upon them and all these different things. Amen. 
So it says, a tent used for shelter and persons from the what? Weather. From the weather. Amen. From the different kings. Yeah. To lodge as in a tent to what? Tabernacle. So what is a tabernacle? A temporary habitation. To dwell, to reside for a time. This is only for a time. Because at the second coming, where are we going? In the habitation with God. We're going to the tabernacle, right? Amen. And we're going to travel in boots as, an, as, a, as a type of our um, experience in the wilderness. The, the, um, the tabernacle teaches us this. Um, Feast of Tabernacles. So it means a temporary um, to reside for a time, to be housed. And I love this. When Christ, Christ tabernacle in the flesh, it was a temporary habitation for Christ, right? Amen. Amen. Christ, when Christ came in human flesh, it was only for a time. And after he died and rose again, he got the true house, right? Leaving us an example that this experience for God's people is only for a time. And at the end, when Christ comes, he's going to give us in the true house. And we're going to ascend up to heaven. Keep these things in mind. If we're not following, ask the question, and I'll go take my time. So next, let's read this quote. She says, to, to, to prove these things a little more. In one of the most beautiful and comforting passages of Isaiah's prophecy, reference is made to the pillar of cloud and a fire to represent God's care for his people in the great final struggle with the powers of evil. The Lord will create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion and upon her assemblies a what? A cloud and smoke by day and the shining of a flame and fire by night. For above all the glory shall be a what? So what is this? So what's the third angel's message? A covering. Amen. The third angel's message is our covering. That's I want us to get this. And it says, and there shall be a tabernacle for a shadow. So Israel was dwelling under the shadow of the most high when they were in the wilderness. So those who are in the third angel's message are dwelling under the shadow of the most high. So from the fifth day of the fourth month, where we are right now. Right. We're dwelling under the shadow of the Most High. And if we leave his shadow, whose shadow are we going to go under? There's two shadows. There's God's shadow and there's Satan's shadow. And shadow is a symbol of a government, Daniel chapter 4. Right? The great tree, all the birds dwelt under the shadow. So we're either going to be in the government of Christ, third angel's message, or we're going to be opposed to Christ, opposing the third angel's message. We're going to crucify him. We're living in that time where people are going to crucify this message. And God forbid that's any of us. It's, this is not dealing with, this is talking to us. It says, And there shall be a tabernacle for shadow in the daytime from the heat and, from, and for a place of refuge and for a covert from storm and from rain. So I want us to see that this cloud is also angels. Amen. Our protection right now, holy angels, are sheltering us right now. At, we must understand these things. They are sheltering us at this very moment. Holy angels are doing this, but they're only commissioned to shelter those that are abiding under the tabernacle of the third angel's message. And let's, let's prove this a little more. It says, so long as the people of God preserve their fidelity to him, so long as they cling by living faith to Jesus, they are under the protection of heavenly what? Angels. And Satan will not be what? permitted to exercise his hellish arts upon them to their what what did Swindon read in Matthew 5 with the swine it was to their destruction and we're going to come to this we're going to come to this this is this is very serious this is not just a prophecy the Lord is showing us God is now warning us that if we don't abide in this message he's going to give us up amen that's what that's what God is teaching us right now he wants us to see this. If we don't abide in this message, he's going to give us up. It's a warning that he's, that he's sending to us. Because right here where we have this, fire is about to come. And when this fire comes, I'm telling us, all of America, all of the world is going to be shaken. This movement is going to be shaken. The Lord is about to agitate everyone. Whatever can be shaken will be shaken. And whatever can, will remain will remain. Amen? Satan's object is to get us to leave the tent. That's his object. So this is why God is going to permit him to bring this shaking. But how is Satan going to bring it? He's going to desire some people. He's going to want to use some of us to bring this shaking. And, and we have to keep him out. 
For three years, Christ is trying to keep him out. Amen. That's, he used Judas to bring the shake in. Amen. Judas brought the crisis. So every time, every time a group advanced, Satan needs to take somebody else from that group. And we don't want him to take us. We don't want him. To, we don't want that to happen. That's why I said this is very serious. It's not just a prophecy. It's real life. We are really living these things. Amen. We really live in it. It says, um, but those who separate themselves from Christ by what? So we don't have to literally leave. Satan knows who's sinning because he put it in. He told you to go do it. Right. He's the one that he's the he's the man of sin. He's the king of sin. So whenever we whenever we sin, he's the one telling us to go do it. He told Judas to go betray Christ. But Judas was so, was so comfortable with listening to him. He did it. He was telling Peter to do it. But Peter didn't do it at the table. But Peter did it later on. Amen. So we all, we have to keep these things in mind. It says, but those who are sep separate, separate themselves from Christ by sin are in great peril. If they continue to disregard the requirements of God, they know not how soon he may give them over to Satan and permit him to do to them according to his will. We don't know when this is coming. Right. We have no idea when this is coming. And um, right here at the beginning of the 10, we don't know how soon the Lord is going to do this. We have 2021 where who's inaugurated. He's inaugurated. Right. And one, two. Three, and the Lord is about to bring this evil spirit. We get this from the story of Judges 9 with Abimelech, right? He knew not, they, Abimelech did not know how soon God was going to do this. Jotham gave the prophecy that if this is so, then let this happen. But if not, then go and worship Abimelech, right? But it wasn't so. It was built by treachery, and the time now came for God to bring this shaking amongst them or this civil war. Now we have many video. We have a few videos up with, with going over Biden and Abimelech and all of and all of these things. This is not the focus for right now. We're just dealing with this casting out, and we want to add some new element to it as we go along. So go down with me to the next quote. It says, "Christ desires nothing so much as to redeem his heritage from the dominion of Satan. But before we are delivered from Satan's power without, we must be delivered from his power where." Within. So for three years, Christ was delivering the disciples from Satan's power within. Amen. They had to be delivered from his power. What's Satan's power within? Error. You shall know the truth. And what does the truth do? It makes you free. So Christ is trying to free us from Satan's power within because Satan's power within is why we respond to his temptations. So when this, so right now, Christ is trying to remove something from us. Prior to this point, so that when this point come, we won't respond to that temptation. Y'all yeah, follow? When he sends this fire right here, we won't respond to it because we allowed Christ from now till then to remove something from, from something of Satan from us. So since 2014, Christ has been doing this work of cleansing the temple, which we have illustrated here. And I want us to understand something. If we made it to 2016 and we're still in this message, something was removed. Something was removed. Because when the temptation came in 2016 to leave the tent, did we leave? No, we didn't leave. We remain with Christ. But there's still something there. Right? So Christ brings us to right here. And what happened? Another shaking. What is it that happened? Who's not president anymore? Trump. So, so now what are we dealing with? We look like false prophets, right? Another shaking. So Christ, once again, is removing something else. Y'all follow? At each disappointment, he was removing error. In, in April 19, he was removing an error. October 22nd, he was removing an error. But it, it's sad that he has to bring us to a disappointment to remove the error. But when we get to the disappointment, don't, don't get shaken out by what's taking place around you. If you've made it a habit to go to the scriptures each time, you'll be okay. So right now, Christ is trying to make us make it a habit of going to the scriptures so that when this time comes, don't go out just because your favorite minister is rejecting something that you can see. Amen. Because in 2016, our favorite minister, you know, I, I listened to Jeff a lot, but Jeff was rejecting many of the things that the Lord was showing to be true. I couldn't walk with him anymore. And when you go back to 2014, 
Jamal and them and Dario and Pastor Corns, they were some of my favorite ministers. But they were rejecting some of the things that the Lord was showing. I couldn't walk with them. And if I go back to 9-11, the conference church, when this message came to me, I, the Lord was showing me that this is right. And my favorite ministers, Doug Batchelor and all those people, they were saying that it was error. And I couldn't go with that. Amen? So it's this, it's this, I see the hands. It's the same thing as we go along, and I'm bringing that up so that we don't forget how the Lord has led us in the past and his past teachings and our experience. We got to treasure these things up and hold on to the truth that he reveals to us no matter who opposes it, no matter who it is. If, if the Lord shows you is right and you have two or three witnesses to confirm that the thing is right, you stay your feet on it and you do not move until they can convince you from the word of God that what you believe is wrong. Amen. Amen. That's that, that's that this this is going to be serious on what's coming. Go ahead, Quentin and Sarah. OK, go ahead. He deferred. All the people left, but the people because they stayed away from the Millerites. The Millerites, right? Yeah, they um, I think something else. After after they found out what actually happened, they weren't very they were great joy because because it was explained to them. Yeah, they said if all the people that had stayed, then they would have had that joy too. Amen. So Satan got them to leave the tent. Yeah. Amen. And they went out, and Christ couldn't cover them anymore. Joy and peace. And who? Satan took possession of them. Right? Amen. But for the Millerites, he was cast out. How was he cast out? They were, they were keeping the day handed down by the papists and the heathen. And they accepted the Sabbath and Sunday was now cast out. Amen. But those first day Adventists, they maintain and cherish Satan. They cherish his firstborn child. And what did Satan give them? He gave them power to go out and go to the kings and to deceive them to oppose the Sabbath. So they were the swine that went to the waters. Keep that in mind. Go ahead. Um, I was just thinking about <coughs> Peter again, because Peter was conversing with Christ, even though he was disappointed by seeing Christ wash everyone's feet. Like Judas. Um, yeah, but Peter, you know, he was having this conversation with Christ or with the word, so he was able oh, to find the strength. That's nice. Amen. He was conversant He was conversant with his Bible. Christ said nothing to Peter. It, because he didn't ask. As he was presenting it, I noticed that Peter revealed that he had sin. Judas cherished his in his heart. He still never revealed it. He never even confessed it before his disciples. Y'all follow? This is talking about some of us. I, this is about us. Some of us may be treasuring something against this message, and we're not revealing it before people. But that's what this is designed to do. This is going to reveal it. The Lord is going to bring something. You're going to, you're going to confess that you never liked this message. If you really are cherishing hatred for the message. Y'all follow? That's what happened in 2016. That's what happened in 2014. That's what happened at 9-11. All those people who left were cherishing something that they did not like. And when Christ sent light, it revealed what they did not like. The principle of John 1 tells us that light shines in darkness and darkness compre comprehended it not, right? They fought it. They resisted it. This is talking about us. God is going to send light. And if, we cher if we're cherishing anything in our heart against the work that he's doing, he will most certainly reveal it. G um, Swindon just read. All the disciples searched their hearts to see if there was any thought that was opposed to the men. If Christ is telling this, us to, telling this to us now, what should we be doing? Searching my heart to see if, I, if there's any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Amen. Check. We need to be going over this, not looking at me. Don't worry about me. Christ says, weep for yourself. Right? Weep for yourself. Don't weep for me. Unless you're praying that God will help me, well, search yourself. Make sure that you, that you really do believe this and that you do understand this message. I really want us to understand this message because outside of this message, there is nothing. 
nothing. Go ahead. Is that your hand? I don't know what you're asking me. Who, me? Searching yourself? Yeah. Disappointment? I'm going to go on because I don't have time. So let's go back to the notes. Revelation 12. So cast out, cast out. Christ is cleansing the heart. Before we're delivered from Satan's power without, which is the end. We're delivered from his power without because we go up to where? We go up to heaven, Right? We go up to heaven at the end. Amen? Y'all follow? Second coming, we go up to heaven. We're delivered from Satan's power without, no more to be harassed by him, and so forth. Uh, I just want us to make sure we see this. We're using these things, they're, they're symbols. And these symbols uh, illustrate, these symbols, these stories in the Bible illustrates to us our very experience. Because before the real, Christ teaches us by acted parables. Before, and he gives us living representations. Whatever is about to come into the future, the way that God teaches his people, he gives them a living experience in the things that's going to come in the future. All the time, right? Before Christ really came, they had to really kill a lamb. Amen? They had to really have a Passover before the real Passover came. So the Lord was giving them a living illustration of the Passover before the real Passover. So that when the real Passover come, they would recognize that work and they would work with Christ in that work. So Christ has to give us an illustration of the Sunday law before the Sunday law. Amen? Amen? And right now we're living in that type of that illustration of the Sunday law, the coronavirus. People can't buy and sell unless they have the mark, unless they can, they, whatever, they, whatever implementations they want to give for it. You can't come into the store unless you have this mask on your face. Amen? All of these is just a living illustration of what this is going to be like. They're doing it to the coronavirus now, but when the, when the spiritual coronavirus comes, which is Sunday worship, because those who receive that coronavirus is going to be possessed by demons. Amen? And if you're not possessed by demons, you're not going to be able to buy or sell. That's Satan's prerogative. But God also has one where he says, if you're not keeping the Sabbath, you're not going to be able to buy or sell either. You're not, you're not going to be able to receive light or sell light at the same time. Amen? If you're not keeping the Sabbath, they're... It's, it's a death decree on both sides. Um, but let's go down. Let's go to, to our notes. It says, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. The dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the, great, and the great dragon was what? Cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. When Satan was in heaven, the angels had to be delivered from his power within. And once all the angels made their decision, Satan was what? Cast out. Amen? So once Judas and Peter made their decision, Judas was what? Cast out. So right now the Lord is waiting on us to make our decision. And once we've made our decision, either, either to stay in the tent or leave the tent, that's when Satan, that's when this fire can come. Amen? I want us to see this. Um, right now, each one of us is making a decision. We're making the decision right now. Whether we're going to keep Satan out or we're going to keep Christ in. It says, and it was cast out, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice from, say, from loud voice saying in heaven, now has come salvation. Jump down to the next quote. So right here, this is the end. There's war in heaven, right? The Sunday law from here to the second coming is war, right? And at the end, Satan is cast out. So I'm just taking this right here. Each one of these is a war. Amen. And Satan is cast out at the end. When Jesus came and he cleansed the temple, he was declaring what? War. And Satan was cast out. That is showing us the king of the north coming back against the king of the south. Amen. But later on, what did the Pharisees do? They push back. They said, who gave you this authority? So the south is going to push back by challenging the authority of the north. Amen? That was the 1260. Atheism challenged the authority of the papacy. That's what they, so the South always challenges the authority. And when you go to the Civil War, what did the South do? Challenge the authority. And the North exerted their authority. Amen? These, these are all giving us living illustration, and it's about truth and error. Truth sometimes gains the ascendancy in our heart, and we do what God says, and then Satan pushes back with the error, and then we put the truth down. 
Y'all follow? This is the everyday battle that we all go through every day. The everyday battle. Sometimes we study, sometimes we don't. Sometimes we pray, sometimes we don't. But God says we can't keep living like that. Amen? He says either you make the tree good and its fruits good, or you make the tree evil and its fruits evil. You can't keep praying one day and not praying the next, studying one day and not studying the next. We got to study every day. Amen? We got to gather the manna every day. Every single day gather the manna. And every single day we have to pray. This is how we keep Satan cast out. Amen? This is how we remain in the tent. That's how we stay in the tent, by doing these little work that the Lord asks us to do all the time. It says, And ye that dwell in them, woe to the inhabitants of the earth for the, and of the sea, for the devils come down unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. So there's a group that goes up to heaven, but Satan comes down with woe upon those on the earth. Amen? He's cast out of heaven, and now he comes down to afflict those upon the earth. He now goes to the swine at the end of the day. So now let's go to Matthew 8. So when Satan is cast out, the rule we want to now bring in, he always makes a request to go somewhere else. Every time he's cast out, he makes a request. The Lord wants us to understand these things. And as Swinon was going over, what God is now teaching us, he's teaching us how Satan works. So that when we go to fight with him, when we go out to the world, we will not be ignorant of his devices. Amen. We will understand when people come before us, whether they have the spirit of God or the spirit of Satan. This is what the Lord wants us to have, this, this spirit of discernment, to detect the deceiver in all of his disguises. Amen. Um, I, I wish I had time to go into this some more. As Swinon had over here, 538 and 1798 and 1793. And then you have the, you have the king of the north that, that was in power for some time, and then the king of the south. But it's just Satan. It's just one kingdom. And this is what he does. And I wanted to show this, that this is also our heart. Our hearts is deceitful. When our heart wants to deceive us, it cloaks itself with goodness. It says, it's okay to go and do that. I don't see anything wrong with that, right? But when we, when we defeat that, it now, <laughs> it's, 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 it, just, it just comes at us. Yeah, you know, just go ahead and, and we got to resist both of those things. Amen? We got to resist this. Uh, hopefully more on that later, but not for this subject. I just want us to see this. The north and the south is just one kingdom. It's just this man of sin working deceitfully, using good things. But then when that doesn't work, remove that and now he just use anything. And that was what was taking place from 2016. And now we're at the fifth day of the fourth month. Anything is now going at this point. It's... it's um, whatever the Lord allows. So let's read Matthew chapter 8. When Satan is cast out, the principle I want to bring in, he always makes a request. And, and um, Swinon went over that at the beginning, we all come here at the beginning. Some are possessed. We're all possessed. You know, but some is going to have him removed and some is not going to have him removed. And I'm paralleling this story. The one that shows us him not being removed is Genesis 19. When, when Lot was in Sodom, the men of the city, they were possessed, right? Did they have the demon removed? No. They got worse as Lot was giving them the message. But these demoniacs, they recognized Christ, and they had the demon removed. So you have to bring these two stories together as Swinon was going over. There's two classes here. There's one that's going to maintain their cherished desire, and there's one that's going to give up their cherished desire um, and, and have Satan removed. So it says, and when he was come to the other side into the country of um, Gergesenes, there met him two possessed with devils, coming out of the tombs, exceeding fear, so that no man might pass by that way. And jump down to 31. So the devils besought him, saying, oh, actually 30. And there was a good way off from them and heard of many swine feeding. So the devils besought him, saying, if thou cast us out, suffer us to go away into the herd of swine. And he said unto them, what? Keep that in mind. He said, go. Keep that in mind. It says, and when they were come out, they went into the herd of swine. And behold, the whole herd of swine ran how? Violently down into a steep place into the sea. Keep this in mind. And perish in the what? So the swine is going to go into the sea. Students of prophecy. What is a sea? Peoples, nations, multitudes, and tongues. So when God permits Satan... To go to the swine, these swines is going to go do violence in the cities where there are many peoples, 
nations, multitudes, and tongues. Amen? So God is here revealing to us he's about to permit Satan to wreak havoc in the cities. You follow? He's showing us Satan is about to wreak havoc in the cities, bringing violence. And he's going to permit him to probably use some of us. Because that's what Judas did. He went out violently. Amen? Because what does that mean? When this happens, we're going to give a warning message. Some of us are going to go out with the spirit of God, and some of us are going to go out how? With the spirit of Satan, and we're going to cut off people's ears like Peter. We're going to do it violently. Not literally, right? We're going to preach the message, but it's not with sweet love, joy, and peace. It, yeah, they won't hear you because your character is not going to match that. Amen? But some of us are going to be like Christ here or, or like Lot, and we're going to go out, brethren, do not so wickedly. Our spirits is going to match that, what we're preaching. Amen? So while there's going to be violence in the cities, the Lord is also going to be doing a work. There's going to be natural violence and spiritual violence. That's what I want us to see. So it matters what we are doing right now. What, what are we doing right now as we're hearing these things? Do we see this? Yeah. Okay, I, I, I just want to see this. I see your hand. Go ahead. <coughs> huh? I can't hear you. That's why we need to move. Amen. Yes, the Lord is going to permit this to happen. And this is only a measure of this. This is up to the sign. Amen. This level, this is down at Midway. Y'all see, uh, y'all are following? Because when you come down here at Midway, these things are going to increase. And there's some nice thoughts I, I really would love to share, but I can't do it right now. There's some really nice thoughts why it's going to be like this. Because Ellen White tells us this trouble will not cease until what? Until Jesus comes. So the trouble is going to increase until Jesus comes. And Jesus coming is told, us, told to us in Revelation chapter 1. It's a revelation of Jesus Christ. Christ is going to reveal himself right here, but he's only going to reveal himself after John does his work by saying, repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is how? It's at hand. So John has to reveal Christ coming by the message, and then Christ comes and confirms John's message. So this message that we're teaching is the John message, is the Elijah message. And then openly. So here we're given this warning message, calling men to repentance to prepare for the second coming. And Christ is going to honor our message by having the prophecy come to pass. But the Lord is showing us that it has a beginning and an end. Amen. So it's going to happen here, small at first, and then it's going to get big as we get down to the end. So let's go down. Revelation 17. And he saith unto me, the waters which thou sawest where the horse sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. And when you look up the word um, violently, it means, a, it means dash, and the root word to it, it means assault. So when you look up assault, it means an attack or violent onset, whether by an individual, a company, or an army. A, as assault by an army is a violent, hostile attack, and when made upon a fort or fortified place, it's called a what? Storm. So what's about to be right here? Storm. A storm. There's going to be violent attacks that's going to take place right here. I want y'all to see this. When this happened, Jesus is revealing himself to us. That's what this is. It's a revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. I tell you before this come to pass so that when it is come to pass, you might what? You might believe. So when we see this, some of us is going to have a Peter-like spirit and accept the light that comes. And some of us is going to have a Judas-like spirit and reject the light that comes. Y'all follow? So Christ is telling us this before it comes to pass so that we will prepare our hearts and not to have the Judas-like spirit. Don't come to this experience with that spirit. Y'all follow? That's, uh, this, is, this is a beautiful message. It's beautiful because Christ is really about to reveal himself to us by bringing to pass what is being taught. And it's only to bring strong conviction upon our hearts to confess our sins. Because when it comes to pass, we better pour out our sins to God. We better confess, confess every bit of it. But what did Judas do? He sat silently. He didn't utter one word of confession to Christ or his brethren. He didn't ask the disciples to pray for him. He didn't even ask the master of all prayers to pray for him. You know, and Kerry brought up a nice point. She didn't say it when Swindon was presenting. 
She says, why is it that the disciples called Jesus Lord, but Judas, Judas called him what? Master. The disciples acknowledged Christ's divinity, but Judas what? Didn't. He recognized him only as a man. He only understood natural things. He had no understanding of the spiritual things. Amen. Because he saw that it was only a spiritual kingdom. His deception was Satan was cast out for a brief moment for Judas. His heart thrilled through and through. He's going to see how prophecies fulfilled right here by the message we're teaching. Y'all follow? He's, he's in this room right now. He's in this movement right now. We're going to witness prophecy being fulfilled. We're preaching a message saying the Lord is about to shake up the earth, that God is going to allow Satan to go into the cities violently right here. This is Moses lifting up the rod. And what's going to come? What's going to hit the waters violently? What did the Bible say? We're going there next. Come on, students of prophecy. The Red Sea. Moses lifted up the rod and the Bible said God sent what kind of a wind? Uh, no, nah, not just an east wind. What does it about? A strong, right? Our mighty east wind right here. And it went into the waters. And what did it do to the waters? It troubled it. Right? So the Lord, this is what the Lord wants to see. The waters is about to be troubled. It's about to be troubled. And he wants us to understand this and, pre and prepare for it. You got to prepare for it. We need to find out how to prepare. Amen? And one of it is prayer and Bible study and abide in your tents. Um, go down to go under assault. Assail, it means to leap or fall upon, upon by violence, to assault, to attack suddenly. Jesus attacked when the mob came for Christ. Christ attacked them violently. How did he do it? In the spirit and the power of God, right? But Peter drew his sword and he did it naturally. Amen. Some is going to go out with a natural understanding of the scriptures and some is going to go out with what? A spiritual understanding. Underst amen. That's amen. Some of us is going to go out right and some of us is just not going to go out right. Exodus 14, this is where we were going. So remember, just, um, Satan, Swindon went over. I pray if um, people are coming in for the first time. In Swindon's presentation, he showed us that when Satan was cast out, where did he go? Into Ju Who was the swine? Judas. And in Matthew 8, we're seeing that when Satan's cast out, he makes a request. He says, Lord, if you're going to cast me out, send me to the swine. So this shows us that when Jesus was in the upper room, Satan was making a request to God. God, if you're going to cast me out of the 11 disciples, then send me into Judas. Did you all see what's happening here? All of the disciples' problems now becomes whose? Judas. All the thoughts they were troubled with and God took it away from the disciples, now it becomes Judas' thought. Amen. He becomes that ransom. This is scary. This is real. All of us is, is struggling with so many different thoughts, right? God is going to drive those things out where we're not going to be troubled by them anymore if we're faithful. And those who are not faithful, it's now going to become their problem. Y'all follow? And this is going to cause you to act violently because you're going to want to escape those thoughts. The two demoniacs, how did they act? violently right but when satan when jesus cast them out the bible says they were clothed and in their right mind peace was in their hearts and then satan said all right send me to the swine and he went to them and they act violently so now let's go here to the red sea it's the same story same story and moses stretched out his hand over the sea and the lord caused the sea to go back by a what strong east wind so right here east wind is going to blow it's going to blow very strong or violently. Amen? It's going to blow violently. That's the east wind. Now we want to look at the swine, what they're going to do. So it says, And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto them on the right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the, into the midst of the what? What did the swine do? They went into the sea. The way was opened up, not for the Egyptians, for Israel. This is happening for Israel, not the Egyptians. But they're going to go into the sea too. They're going to do a work too. That's what I want us to see. Both, both Judas went out and did a work, and, Peter, and Jesus and Peter went to do a work. Jude, Jesus went with, Jesus went with um, 
Peter went with Jesus and Judas went with Antichrist. Amen. They both went with Jesus. One true Jesus and one false Jesus. Going on. It says, And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them into the midst of the sea, even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots and his horsemen. And it came to pass that in the morning watch, the Lord looked upon the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and the, the cloud and what? Troubled the host of the Egyptians. So what's going to come here? Trouble. Go down to the next bowl. And it says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, and upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth, stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength when the morning appeared, and the Egyptians fled against it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. So this has given us a beginning and an end. And what marks the two is Moses stretched out his hand, and Moses stretched out his hand, right? Beginning and end. And when Moses does it, does it here, we go across. We're going to cross over. But Pharaoh's also going to try to cross over. So let us look at who this Egyptian is. Yes, he's caught in the thicket. Amen. Right? All right. So let's go down. Let's look, go down to the, the highlight, the bowl. It says, after this, he hurried with his army after Israel. He sought to bring back a people delivered by the arm of omnipotence. So what is Satan going to do? He's going to try to bring us back. That's why he's going to cause trouble here. The whole purpose of the trouble is to bring us back. It's to, it's to get us to look at all of what's taking place so that we would give up the light that Christ has just sent to us. But I, don't, I forgot this part. When, when Moses did this, what went between the two? Light, right? So what do you have here? The little praying company and the what? And the world. This is early writings 54. The light went between Israel and the Egyptians. And right here at the end, it was an exceeding bright light because the sea closed in upon them. Right? Amen. Amen, which is a bright light. So you have this light, an exceeding bright light, and the light, the light separates the Egyptians from, from the little praying company. So some of us, by the grace of God, if hopefully all of us, were a little praying company. So when this light comes, it's going to make a separation between those who are little praying company and those who have the spirit of the world. So going on, it says, As Moses stretched out his rod over the sea, the embanked waters that had stood as a great wall rolled on in their natural course. Of all the men of Egypt in that vast army, not one escaped. Listen to this next part. All perished in their determination to have their own way and to refuse what? So what's an Egyptian? One who wants his own way and refuses God's way. So everybody's an Egyptian who has this spirit. Amen. So when God sends this light, some of us are going to want our own way versus his way. And that's what's going to separate the two of us. That's what happened to Judas and Peter, right? Judas wanted his own way. Peter also wanted his own way, but he surrendered it. Amen. He surrendered his own way and he didn't refuse. He refused it in the beginning. He refused it. He saw the work Christ was asking him to do and he refused it. But when Jesus, but Jesus rebuked him and says, Peter, if I don't wash you, you're not going to have no part with me. And then Peter said, you know what, Lord, not only my feet only, but also my, my head, my, 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 yeah, wash me, wash me all over. Right. That's what Peter. So Peter surrendered his own way and accepted Christ's way. But the Bible says Judas was just mad. He was mad because he couldn't get his own way. So he was an Egyptian. He was a southern man in a northern army. Amen? That's what he was. Amen. So an Egyptian is one who wants his own way. Atheism, they just want their own way. The spirit of atheism, and just look at them, just look at them in the world today. They just want their own way. That's the spirit of Pharaoh. But this spirit, the spirit of the Pope, they want their own way, but it's disguised. They do it under deception. They pretend to go along with you, only hoping to get the advantage over you at some point. But God is going to reveal that spirit, too, because it's an evil spirit. So when we go back to, to the quote that Satan besought Jesus, and when you look up the word besought, Swinton went over this, so the devils besought him, and when... And besought means desire. So when you go to Luke 22, Swinton read this, it says, And the Lord says, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan, what? Besought you 
He besought to have you. So Christ right now is giving us a, a real, Christ is lifting the veil of what's going on in the spiritual world right now. Right now, Satan is making a request for each one of us in this room. He's asking God for each one of us. And I could give you a second witness, Job, right? He was asking God for Job. And God says, okay, you can have Job. You can have him in your hand. But Job has to, Job has to choose to come to you. Did Job, did Job choose to go to Satan? No, he remained with Christ. That's what happened with Peter. Peter remained with Christ. Because Christ says he prayed for Peter. Did he pray for Judas? Yes. No. No. What did John 17 say? I pray not for the world. Said, those Amen. Those that you gave me, I've kept. I've prayed for them. This is, I, we need to understand these things. What is it teaching us? Christ can't make intercession for us if we have the spirit of Judas or the spirit of the world. He can't intercede on our behalf. That's what this is teaching us. So when this time comes, Christ is going to make intercession for some, and some he's going to give up. Y'all follow? It's supposed to strike fear in our hearts um, to, to, to guard our hearts from these things. So going down, the Lord said to John 13, it says, When Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in spirit and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. And jump down to the next boat, 24. Simon Peter therefore beckoned to him that he should ask who it, who, who it should be of whom he spake, 26. Jesus answered, He it is to whom I shall give a sop, when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. And after the sop, Satan, what? Entered into him. Then said Jesus unto him, That thou doest, what? Go. Amen. Amen? Jesus said to him, go. What does he say go and do? Go ye into all the world. Y'all follow? Amen. So right here, Christ is going to go into all the world, and Satan is going to what? Go into all the world. Christ works, Satan works. Amen? That's what the Lord wants to see. Israel went in, Pharaoh went in. Amen? And we're going to see Israel went forward with the, with the writer's ink horn, and then Pharaoh, the destroying angel, came right behind them. So let's go to Ezekiel chapter, um, let's, let's look at Matthew 8, and we're going to close out with Ezekiel 9. So the devils besought him, saying, If thou cast us out, suffer us to go away into the herd of swine. And he said unto them, Go. Let's go to Ezekiel 9. Um, let's look at the bow. We know the story that six men, one with the writer's ink horn, and five men with destroying weapons. And it says, um, let's jump to verse, let's go down to verse 4. And, it, and the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. And to the others he said in mine hearing, what? Go. go. They both are told to go. That's what I want us to see. So I'm going to close out at that point and by the grace of God, there's other parts that we're going to follow up with this. I don't know if I'll present them on Sabbath, um, how the Lord leads. I may do them in the middle of the week. And I just want to encourage us to, you know, by the grace of God, to, to, to watch some of these things. Watch these presentations as they're going out. I mean, you have your free choice to do so. But I'm just encouraging us to, to, to do so because what the Lord is opening up is very important for us to understand. He wants us to see, understand what he's about to do. And in relation to what he's about to do, the part we play in what he's about to do. And Swinon went over this morning that right here we come, this is the time of the foot washing. It's a period of time, you know, but there's these different points where the Lord is doing a particular work at, during this period of time. And right here, we're, we're here because 2021, um, which we have marked here, is the 20th of January. 20th of January, 2021, where Biden was inaugurated. And we showed in Bible prophecy that, that Biden is a fulfillment of Bible prophecy, just as much as Trump was. Amen. And we showed that Biden is standing up here now as king, putting all of these executive orders in, but the Lord is about to trouble them very soon. And this is what the Lord is about to do because he set, he set his kingdom up by treachery. And Judges 9 shows us what the Lord is about to do. What did Judges 9 say? The Lord is going to send an evil spirit. And it's going to trouble them. What is that evil spirit? Is Satan going into the swine. Amen? 
This is what the Lord has shown us. But before Satan goes into the swine, he's going to be cast out, cast out of God's people. And then he's going to make requests now. OK, then send me into those people. So God is lifting the veil so we can see what's taking place behind in the spiritual realm. That's the realm we need to understand. We need to see what's happening outside of the natural world that we're living in. And the Lord wants us, and this is the kind of people that God is going to have here, a spiritual-minded people that understand spiritual things and, and are not deceived by the events taking place on the earth. So Satan now is going to cause trouble here. Why? Pharaoh said that we're told that it's to bring the people back that accepted the light because Israel accepted the light, and now he's going to try to bring them back. So right here, we're going to have trouble that's going to come. It's going to affect us. It's going to affect everybody. And it's, and it's just an attempt being made to bring us back into bondage. So the Lord is trying to prepare us for this. And we know this because in Genesis 19, the trouble effect, it came, it surrounded Lot's house. It surrounded his house. And Lot had to defend the, the, the message in, in which he accepted. So I, I pray that we're seeing this. Hopefully in the next one, we're going to go in more into detail of who are the swine and, 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 and stuff like that. Things of that nature. Without any further ado, let us close out with a word of prayer. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, we want to thank you, dear God, for this Sabbath day. And we also want to thank you for lifting the veil um, to, to, your, to the word, O oh Lord, so that we can understand what you're about to do and do everything we can in our power to prepare for what you're about to do. We ask that you please forgive us of our sins, that you create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. And Lord, we also want to pray and ask that you prepare the way for the next presentation. I pray that every, um, you'll help everyone to be awake and attentive. And may you um, be with the next speaker, guiding his thoughts, choosing his words, O oh Lord, and, and that his words will be with power, complimenting, O oh Lord, the work that, was, that, that has gone before. Please, may you continue to help us to understand these things and help us to continue to keep this day holy, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.